Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that very fine and thorough statement. Um, I very much appreciate that, and I want to thank our witnesses for being with us once again. The United States faces the most complex and daunting set of security challenges since the height of the Cold War. And our witnesses today are on the front lines of those challenges. From the Chinese Communist Party's unprecedented military buildup, growing hegemonic ambitions, to Russia's brazen and unprovoked attack on Ukraine, our adversaries are testing American resolve. Our foremost adversary and competitor, the Chinese Communist Party, has stressed both SOCOM and CyberCOM in ways we never imagined a decade ago. Last year, General Nakasone said Chinese advances in cyber operations are unlike anything he has seen before. He also noted the People's Republic of China is a more difficult adversary than the Soviet Union because they are much more tolerant of risk. So this presents new challenges to our deterrence posture. Although Beijing may be our foremost adversary, others are not far behind. The cyber capabilities of Russia, Iran, and North Korea have continued to surprise many. I would appreciate an update on DOD's work to implement a zero-trust architecture and provide defensive cyber tools across the department and the, the industrial base. I also look forward to discussing how collaborative cyber activities with our allies and partners, such as Hunt Forward Operations, have helped to identify vulnerabilities, mitigate threats, and strengthen our network defenses. Military success in cyberspace depends on the readiness of our cyber mission forces. I hope to hear about how we can improve our cyber force readiness and accelerate development of cyber capabilities, particularly on the offensive side. General Fenton is no stranger to the determination of the People's Liberation Army. Having served as commander of our Special Operations Forces in the Pacific and the Deputy Commander of Indo-PACOM, his challenge is twofold. To build a force capable of enhancing our deterrence and warfighting in the Western Pacific, even as the threat environment facing our nation demands that SOCOM should remain fully engaged in the fight against violent Islamic terrorist groups across the world, from Africa to South Asia. His command's work is critical to our country's security and is often the first to respond to our nation's most pressing unforeseen emergencies. In the 2022 National Defense Strategy, General Fenton's forces have been asked to assume significant risk. I think this committee will want to ensure his command is fully resourced to mitigate that risk to the degree possible. And I would also ask General Fenton and Mr. Mayor whether their authorities and resources in the upcoming year are sufficient for mission tasks. What is clear to me is that the role and importance of special operations forces is only increasing as the nature and complexity of threats facing our nation increase. The resources we provide to Special Operations Command should reflect that reality. Our first job in this committee is to provide the tools our military needs to deter, and if not successful there, to defeat these threats. There's no doubt that continued real growth, continued real growth in the defense budget top line above inflation remains essential to our national security. This requires action now, not later. Our adversaries are not waiting, neither should we. This committee led the bipartisan charge to increase the defense budget in last year's cycle. Mr. Chairman, I frankly have little confidence that the administration budget request this year will be sufficient. If it is not, this committee will again need to step up to ensure that our military has the resources it needs to defend the nation. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to our witnesses. Look forward to hearing from them.